Hey everybody, this is Joe over at Synergy 17, and today I'm going to go over what an optical eye is used for. Um, on the GCC cutters and rolling cutters, as, and even some of the smaller cutters, you'll see that there's an optical eye, and sometimes they call it a, a contour cutting feature. Um, and a GCC, there's the Expert 24, then the 24LX, the only difference being the optical eye. Uh, then there's the Expert Pro and the Puma 3, the only difference being the optical eye. So um, what we want to do is, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you why would you want an optical eye? What is it, what is it used for? So I pulled this, um, this design off the internet and I went ahead and I vectorized it. So now that it's vectorized, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to create a contour around it where the cutter will cut. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this and choose my contour and a quarter inch is perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to, whoops, one step. Um, I'm going to go to wireframe so you can see what it actually did. It put this line around it here. And if you notice this here, I'm going to break this apart. And it's got these little jaggy things here I don't need. So I'm going to delete that one and that one. Uh, I'll make it red so you can see it. So here's my design. It's going to be uh, this graphic, and I'll make it a different color. And I'm going to take this over to Great Cut and get it ready to print and cut. So I'm going to use this here and launch Great Cut. And here it is. And I don't really care about this the color because only my cut line. I don't care about this brown part. So now what I want to do is go to my Tools, Set Jog Marks. And that sets these registration marks for the optical eye to, to see so it knows where it's cutting. So now what I want to do is I want to take the, this purple part here. Oops, let me ungroup it first. I'm going to take the purple part and the registration marks here, these guys. And I'm going to save it, export it as a EPS, which I already did here. It's called, I just call it Decepticon Symbol 2 with crop marks. So when I save that, I'm going to go into another program which controls my cutter, which is my VersaWorks. But at the same time, not only am I doing a cut line here, I created another file where I made the cut marks somewhere else. So what I did was, instead of having this line here, I made cut marks. Oops. Actually, I'm going to zoom in. You see the red here? I actually did cut marks here and I expanded the uh, purple out a little bit so the cut mark uh, kind of bled to the edge and I'm going to cut it. So I'm doing two different designs just to show you an example of what the contour cut does. So, and I've already did that one earlier. So now that that's ready, I'm um, just going to VersaWorks. And I imported both images into the software. And just so I can um, rip it and everything else so it speeds up time, I went in here. I brought in the two images and I set you know my vinyl and you know I did all the things I needed to do to get it ready to cut or sorry to print. So now that's done, I'm gonna head over to the printer and we'll start printing. So what we did now is we just sent the job over to the Versacam and it's gonna print our design with the crop marks. So let's take us a good uh, five or six minutes. So now that this print is finished, uh, we're going to take it out and bring it over to the cutter. So in case you guys don't know, this is a Roland Versacan, and this is an all-in-one built-in print and cut machine. If I wanted to, I wouldn't even put the registration marks. I would actually, it would just print, suck it back in, and cut it right there. The big difference is this machine costs anywhere between, you know, 15 and 20 something thousand dollars, depending on the model and the width and how many heads and everything. Um, but you can achieve the same thing by having a nice uh, you can get yourself a couple thousand dollar large format printer print the information or print your sheet out then take it to your cutter and your cutter can cost you you know seven hundred dollars to you know, two thousand so you can have two machines that do the same thing that this one machine can do so anyways uh, I'm gonna cut the sheet out and uh, we'll move on to the next step okay so now that it's all printed out uh, you get something like this. 
you know, here you have your print and your crop marks. On the crop marks, you can't really tell, but there's a, there's one corner that has this little tiny, let me see if I can zoom in, little tiny notch right there. And that notch tells me that that goes into the cutter this way, the bottom corner. So, for this example, uh, like I was saying, the Expert 24LX has an optical eye, the Puma 3 has an optical eye, and the Jaguar has an optical eye right here. So, I'm going to use my Jaguar to do this example. I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to turn this thing on. It has three pinch rollers, but I'm only going to use two of them. And I'll go ahead and move this in here, and latch it down. And then I'll tell it to read the material. And what I want to do is the optical eye is located right here. I want to actually pull the material out and move the optical eye near the crop mark, which is right here. So I want to have them very close because when I start to cut, it's going to go in there and read it and try to find out where it is. So I'm going to set that as my origin. Enter. And I'm going to head back to the computer. We'll send the job and uh, we'll watch it cut. Okay, the material's loaded, so we're ready to cut. But just like the last part where we selected the, um, the purple part and selected the crop marks, what we were going to do is all we wanted to really do is send this cut line, this outer part here. So uh, if you go up here to cut, it says, you know, my Jaguar 4, um, ready to go. It says cut with AAS. Usually it just says cut, but I chose to cut with AAS. And then it actually it asks me all objects, and I just want to cut the uh, this brown one here, which is my outline. And I already have it set up. I could read my material on how wide it is, but I have it set at 30 speed, 80 pressure for cutting this material. And when I'm ready to go, I hit the output button, and um, I'll go ahead and do that, and we'll watch it cut and see what it does. Okay, now that we're ready to cut, I'm going to click on output. And when I do that, it's going to send a job to the cutter. And you should see the optical eye light turn on. And it's going to go back and forth and look for the registration mark we talked about earlier. And so it found it, and it's going to do the next one, and it finds that one. And then it's going to shoot to the back and look for that one. And then finally go look for that one over there. Once it finds everything, it knows exactly where to cut. And it's all done. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. And I don't need this huge sheet, so I'm going to cut it up just to make it smaller so you can see what it did. Okay, so why did we use a contour cutter? Let me turn this off. I'll show you why. If I were to make a decal or a sticker, let's say I was putting this on a shirt. Um, you know, you go to Walmart and Target and buy paper. So th this example is uh, a decal material, but this could have been um, made for a t-shirt. Well, most times um, when you go to the store and buy the paper from Walmart, it comes in a big square. So if you made a t-shirt, it would just be a big square and it wouldn't look very nice. Uh, same thing with a sticker. So something that some people do is they try to get scissors and they try to cut, you know, around it like that. And then, of course, you're going to have to be really, you know, really accurate to to go around. Anyways, you get the point. You have to cut all the way around it and it's never going to be the same all the way around it. You're just not... I guess de that that detailed or that accurate to do it. So what we do is the optical eye did it for us. So let me get a pair of um, let me get a pick and you'll see what ha what happened. So if you see this right here, I peel this away. It actually did the cut for me. 
did a nice perfect cut evenly around the whole thing. So now if I made a sticker or a decal, it's ex and, you know, it'll look really nice. And so imagine I did that for a t-shirt. I'd peel this off and I'd heat press it to a t-shirt and it would look, I mean, this, is a, this isn't for a t-shirt, but at least now it would look more, it would look better. So um, that's the whole purpose of the optical eye. Now imagine if I didn't want the white outline, I just wanted all this here. I'd have to take my exacto knife and then cut all these pieces out. So that's another one I'm going to do right now. I'll cut that one and I'll show you what that one looks like. Okay, on this example, I loaded the paper up again. And this one, what I wanted to do is I want to... Um, I don't just want an outline. I actually want to cut this part out and this part out. Uh, the problem with some cut and print systems is um, it can go right to the edge, but it'll leave a little white line. Sometimes if it's if it's off a little bit, you'll see a little white line because it's trying to cut exactly on it. So what we do is when we print, we bleed it out a little bit and then put the cut line on the inside. So that's exactly what I did with this one. I made the graphic a little bit bigger, but I kept my cut line the same. So we're going to go ahead and send the job over and see what happens. So the optical eye should turn back on and look for the registration marks, which it found. And this one's going to do a little bit more cutting than the last one. The last one just cut around it. This one's going to cut inside of it. So now, I'm going to turn this off, get my scissors out, so for this example, um, what we're going to do is, let me find my pick. I'm going to peel the outside off first. So you can't really, I don't know if you can see this on here, but I bled it out a little bit more, but the cut line's actually inside there. So let's see if I can do this without poking myself. You can see there's a little bit of purple. Let me pull my getting tool out. There's a little bit of purple on the edge of this because I, I bled it out. So, on this example here, I got a couple little more pieces. I have this little piece on the inside. And then these two little pieces in here. Oops. Okay. So, what we have now is we have... Um, we don't have a white border, but we have lots of pieces. So, for example, this is a piece, and this is a piece here, and we have all these different pieces. So this is the kind of way uh, you do it on a sign shop, is when you cut all your letters out or everything, you use a piece of transfer tape. So if I really wanted to put this on, let's say it was a, uh, for garments, I, you don't want to take all the pieces out and lay them on a shirt. That would be really hard. So you take a piece of transfer tape, just like you do on rhinestones. You put your transfer tape over it, and you pick it up. When you pick it up for um, for a sign, you pick up the whole uh, decal. You go to your window, you plot, you know, you put it on there, and you squeeze it down. And when you pull the transfer tape on, it leaves your sticker all in one piece. Same thing with the garment. Um, they have, uh, like we have color print, we print on the same type of large format printer. You can do print and cut. Then when you're ready, you put your transfer tape over it. It's like a carrier sheet. You pick it up, you put it on your shirt, and you heat press it, and then all your pieces stay together. So um, that's 
what an optofly is used for. You can, you know, do things like this to make the decals. Uh, you can do things like this, and you can still make decals and, and letters or wall graphics. This is really good for doing wall graphics. Um, you can do garment decorating with it as long as you have the right printer, either a pigmentation printer or echo solvent printer. But um, that's really why, what the difference is when people say, hey, do you want an optical eye for contour cutting or do you not need it? So, anyways, I hope you guys find uh, this useful. You can find a lot more videos on YouTube. Thanks.